सो दिस इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू नंबर थ्योरी सो लिटिल बिट मोर ऑफ मैथ बिफोर वी गेट इन टू द पब्लिक की पब्लिक की इज द चैप्टर नाइन बट फॉर पब्लिक की इज वी नीड सम मोर मैथमेटिक्स एंड दैट इज इन दिस वन सो वी टॉक अबाउट प्राइम नंबर्स फॉर मैथ्स एंड यूलर थोरम यूलर आइलर्स यूलर्स आई फॉरगेट दी हाउ यू आइलर ऑयलर या ऑयलर थ्योरम एंड देन टेस्टिंग फॉर प्राइमैलिटी चाइनीज रिमाइंडर थ्योरम एंड डिस्क्रीट लागर थम्स बिकॉज ऑल ऑफ दीज आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर फॉर द पब्लिक की सो फॉर्मैट्स थ्योरम फॉर्मैट हैज टू थ्योरम सो आई थिंक जस्ट टू बी क्लियर वी आर टॉक मोट फॉर्मैट्स लिटिल थ्योरम फॉर्मैट्स लिटिल थ्योरम इज वेरी सिंपल ही सेज टेक एनी नंबर and you take any prime take any number and take any prime that number raised to p minus 1 in raised to p minus 1 will always be 1 mod p very strong take any number take any prime a raised to p minus 1 is always 1 mod p all right and if you multiply both sides by a a raised to p is always a okay here is an example let's take p as 5 5 is a prime number right 1 raised to 5 is 1 we know that 2 raised to okay i got to change all these things to 2 raised to oh sorry oh i'm sorry first one is wrong It should be p minus one. So one raised to five minus one, which is four. Should be four. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. Okay, what do you say? Yeah, yeah, right. But uh, since all of these things are continuous, so I'm just going to put the first case here. Yeah. So two raised to four is sixteen. Mod five is one. Three raised to four is how much? You should be able to do that in your brain now because exam is coming. <laughs> eighty-one and eighty-one mod five. Is one. Four raised to four is sixteen. Four raised to four, two is sixteen. Sixteen raised sixteen times six, sixteen is square. Sorry, sixteen is square is we just calculated that two fifty six, wasn't it? Sixteen times sixteen. Two fifty six mod five is one. Right, and those are only five numbers in mod five. So you know, rest of them are already. True, right. So similarly, you can try with seven. You can try with na with uh, with eleven, thirteen, any prime number you know. This is true. And this would be true for obviously the lowest prime number is. I mean, I don't know if you want to call one as a prime number, but two is there too. Two, three, they are prime, and you can repeat the same process. All right, so that's that theorem. Then Euler's Euler has a stronger result than Fermat. He said that there is a smaller number which he calls totient function. Totient function psi n or phi n, sorry phi n. That is the number of that is the size of the re reduced set of residues so if you write down the number from 0 to n minus 1 that is the complete set of residues residue means remainders when you do mod n arithmetic the remainder will be from 0 to n minus 1 right that is the complete set the size is n in the previous uh, theorem we had used p as the size 
So if you had a mod p operation, then the size would be p, right? So here we are using n for whatever reason. Anyway, so and p is mixed up again. All right. So, but if you just take those residues which are relatively prime to n, which are co-prime, also called co-prime to n, then that set is smaller. So if you take for n equal to 10, this is the complete set, 0 through 9. But 2 is not co-prime to 10 because 2 and 10 have a common factor other than 1, right? 3 is relatively prime, 4 is not relatively prime, 5 is not relatively prime, 6 is not relatively prime, 7 is, 8 is not, 9 is. Right? So, overall only 4 numbers are relatively prime to 10. Right? So, the torsion function is 4. Torsion function of 10 is 4. And um, if P is prime, then obviously everything is relatively prime. So if if it was not 10, if it was let's say 11, then nothing has a common factor with 11, that's why it is prime. Right? So the torsion function for 11 would be 10. We don't have a 0 there. Right? So torsion function for a prime is P minus 1. And if you have a product P and Q, then the torsion function is the product of the P minus 1 and Q minus 1. So let's see, torsion function of 37 is 36, obviously, because every number from 0 to 36, uh, actually 1 through 36, is relatively prime to 37. But 21 is not a prime number, it is 3 times 7. And therefore, the torsion function for 21 is 3 minus 1 times 7 minus 1, which is 2 times 6 is 12. And you can verify that by writing all 21 numbers and seeing which are relatively prime. In fact, I mean, now you can go back to 10. You can calculate the number. How much? 10 is 2 times 5, 2 primes, right? So it would be 2 minus 1 times 5 minus 1, 4 is the torsion function, right? So, the interesting thing is that um, for all A's, A raised to psi n is 1, I mean A raised to phi n is 1. So, you do not really need to go all the way to P, the torsion function will give you a lower number. For example, you do not have to go to, obviously every number raised to 10 in the case of mod 10, uh, 10 minus 1 which is 9, would give you 1. But you do not need to go to 9, power 9, even power 4 will give you 1. Okay. So phi n, so for any a and n, where GCD is 1, where these are basically relatively prime numbers, this one will give you 1. So, A equal to 3, N equal to 10. So, so we have N equal to 10, we know that the phi 10 is 4. If we take 3 raised to 4, we get 81 and we get 1 mod this. If we take A equal to 2 um, and N equal to 11, then they are only relative to prime. So, A equal to 2 and N equal to 10 uh, it does not apply but a equal to 2 and n equal to 11, they are relatively prime, phi n is 10, 2 raised to 10 has 1, is equal to 1. So, you can verify that. Basically, so this is a stronger, basically slightly different than Fermat's little theorem. But basically, in Fermat's little theorem, you have to go all the way to, to p minus 1. Here, you can do with less than p minus 1. 